Welcome back. Modern high traffic websites must serve hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of concurrent requests from users or client, and then return the correct text, images, video, or application data in a fast and reliable manner. Additional servers are generally required to meet these high volumes. Elastic load balancing is an AWS service that distributes incoming application or network traffic across multiple targets, such as Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud instances, container, internet protocol addresses, and Lambda function in a single availability zone or across multiple availability zones. Elastic load balancing scales your application as traffic to your application changes over time. It can automatically scale to most workload. Elastic load balancing is available in three types. An application load balancer operates at the application level. It routes traffic to targets. Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, containers, internal protocol, IP addresses, or Lambda function, based on the content of the request. It is ideal for advanced load balancing of hypertext transfer protocol and secure HTTPS. An application load balancer provides an advanced request routing that is targeted at delivery of modern application architectures, including microservices and container-based application. An application load balancer simplifies and improves the security of your application by ensuring that the latest secure socket layer, transport layer security, and the protocols are used. The second type of load balancing is a network load balancer. It operates at the network transport layer, routing connections to target like EC2 instances, microservices, and container based on IP protocol data. It works well for load balancing both transmission control protocol TCP and UDP traffic. A network load balancer is capable of handling millions of requests per second while maintaining an ultra low latency. A network load balancer is optimized to handle sudden and volatile network traffic patterns. The third type, a classic load balancer, provides basic load balancing across multiple EC2 instances and it operates at both the application layer and the network layer. A classic load balancer supports the load balancing of applications that use HTTP, HTTPS, TCP and SSL. The classic load balancer is an older implementation and when possible you can replace it with modern dedicated application load balancer or a network load balancer. But sometimes we still need it to support HTTP, HTTPS and TCP and SSL protocol in the same application. So how elastic load balancing works? A load balancer accepts incoming traffic from clients and routes requests to its registered targets, such as Amazon EC2 instances in one or more availability zone. You configure your load balancer to accept incoming traffic by specifying one or more listeners. A listener is a process that checks for connection requests. It is configured with a protocol and port number for connections from a client to the load balancer. In similar way, it is configured with a protocol and port number for connections from the load balancer to the targets. You can also configure your load balancer to perform health check, which are used to monitor the health of the registered targets so that the load balancer only send requests to the healthy instances when the load balancer detects an healthy target. It stops routing traffic to that target and then resume routing traffic to the healthy target. There is a key difference on how the load balancer are configured. With application load balancer and network load balancer, you register the target in target groups and route traffic to those target groups. With a classic load balancer, 
you register instances with the load balancer. The use cases for load balancing. It can be used to achieve high availability and better fault tolerance for your application. It can automatically load balance your containerized application. It can automatically scale your application. And if you can use elastic load balancing in your virtual private cloud to enable hyper load balancing, elastic load balancing enable you to load balance across multiple AWS availability zone and on-premises data center. You could also use it to invoke Lambda function over HTTP or HTTPS. Elastic load balancing support that Lambda function to serve the request and enable user to access serverless application from any HTTP client. Now let us look to the monitoring service of AWS, which is a CloudWatch. So to monitor your AWS resources efficiently, you need insight into your AWS resources. For example, you might want to know when you should launch more EC2 instances, if your application performance or availability is being affected by a lack of sufficient capacity, how much of your infrastructure is actually being used. You can capture this information with Amazon CloudWatch. CloudWatch enable you to monitor and observe servers built in the AWS. It is a tool built for DevOps engineers, developers, and site reliability engineers and IT manager. CloudWatch monitor your AWS resources and the application that runs on AWS in real time. You can use CloudWatch to collect and track metrics which are variable that you can measure off for your resources and application. You can create an alarm to monitor any Amazon CloudWatch metric in your account and you can use that alarm to send a notification to Amazon Symbol Notification Service, SNS, or perform an Amazon EC2 auto scaling or Amazon EC2 action. You can also use Amazon CloudWatch events to define rules that match incoming events or changes in your AWS environment, and you route them to target for processing. You can create a CloudWatch alarm that watches a single CloudWatch metric or the result of a math expression based on a CloudWatch metrics. You can create a CloudWatch alarm based on a static threshold. Let's say you want to check if the CPU utilization reach 60% or anomaly detection. So CloudWatch will monitor the behavior of the system and if there is anomaly detected, that will cause an alarm. You could also put a mathematical expression to calculate different metrics all together. Now let us look to Amazon EC2 Auto Scaling. When you run your application in AWS, you want to ensure that your architecture can scale to handle changes in demand. In this section, you will learn how to automatically scale your EC2 instances with Amazon EC2 Scaling. Scaling is the ability to increase or decrease the compute capacity of your application. To understand why scaling is important, consider an example of a workload that has a varying resources requirement. The most resources capacity is required, for example, in a Wednesday, and the least resources capacity required on Sunday. The one option that you could have and to maintain enough capacity with those variable demands is to use an automatic auto scaling. Auto scaling help you to maintain the application availability and enables you to automatically add or remove EC2 instances according to conditions that you define. You can detect any impaired instances and healthy unhealthy application and replaces those instances without any human intervention. In auto scaling, there is several scaling options. There is the manual one, the scheduled, the dynamic, or on demand, and the predictive one. So an auto scaling group is a collection of EC2 instances that are treated as a logical group for the purpose of automatic scaling and management. You have two types of scaling. You have the scaling in and the scaling out. With the scaling in, 
you are going to reduce the amount of resources that you have. You terminate the instances and with the scaling out, you increase the number of EC2 instances to meet a demand. So how Amazon EC2 auto scaling works? To launch an EC2 instance, an auto scaling group use a launch configuration or a template. And that launch configuration will specify the AMI that it will be used, the instance type, whether there is an IAM role or a security groups and the elastic block storage volume that it can be used. Then you define the minimum and the maximum number of instances and the desired capacity of your auto scaling group. You launch it into a subnet within your VPC. Amazon EC2 auto scaling integrates with Elastic Load Balancing to enable you to attach one or more load balancer to an existing auto scaling group. After you attach a load balancer, it will be automatically registers the instances in the group and distribute incoming traffic across the instances. Finally, you specify when you want the scaling events to happen. You have many scaling options, whether maintaining the current instance level at all time, or you do a manual scaling by specifying only the changes in minimum, maximum, and desired capacity of your auto scaling. You could also schedule the scaling action so you can automatically perform based on a function of date and time. Or you can use dynamic on-demand scaling, which is a more advanced way to scale your resources to enable you to define parameters that control the scaling process. Like, for example, you check the CPU utilization, and once the CPU utilization reaches 60%, you will scale out. You add more EC2 instance, and if the CPU utilization is a below 20%, percent then you scale in and you terminate instances you could also use an amazon auto scaling predictive scaling policy which can used to predict the demand based on the history of your data and it use those data in order to predict the future demand based on your infrastructure and based on that predictive using machine learning model it will predict the expected traffic and this will trigger the scaling of adding one or more machines or terminate machines based on those prediction models. One common configuration for implementing dynamic scaling is to create a CloudWatch alarm that is based on performance information from your EC2 instances or load balancer. When a performance threshold is breached, a CloudWatch alarm triggers an automatic scaling event that either scales out or scale in EC2 instances in the auto scaling group. To understand how it works, consider this example. You create an Amazon CloudWatch alarm to monitor the CPU utilization across your fleet of EC2 instances, and you run automatic scaling policy if the average CPU utilization across the fleet goes above 60% for 55 minutes because you need to take a longer period of time to make sure there is a spike in the CPU, not a sudden immediate volatile spike. Then an Amazon auto scaling initiate a new EC2 instance into your IC2 group in your auto scaling group based on the launch configuration that you create. After the new instances is added, Amazon EC2 Auto Scaling makes a call to Elastic Load Balancer to register the new EC2 instance in that auto scaling group. Elastic Load Balancing then performs the required health check to start the traffic distribution to the newly added EC2 instances in the group. So AWS Auto Scaling is a separate service that monitors your application. It automatically adjusts capacity to maintain steady predictable performance at the lowest possible cost. The service provides a simple powerful user interface that enables you to build a scaling plan for your resources including Amazon EC2 instances, container services, DynamoDB, and Aurora replica. Now let us look to lab 6. In lab 6, you will create an Amazon machine image AMI from running instances, you create an application load balancer, you create a launch configuration and auto scaling group, 
and you automatically scale the instances within a private subnet and you create an Amazon Cloud Watch alarm and monitor the performance of your architecture. So the final diagram of this lab is showing here in this slide and you could also look to the full solution of lab 6 in this demo where you can see me doing that final product of the lab. Thank you for seeing this video and see you in the next one.